Good morning, everyone. No, actually, it's 3 p.m. on a Sunday, so good afternoon. I'm gonna get ready, and I know the audio is gonna be a little bit funky, but I hope you guys understand. I'm just filming in my own bathroom. I thought I would just rather chat to you guys and yeah, kind of lowering my expectations when it comes to content creation. I think that's one thing that I've been struggling a lot, knowing that how much I can actually put into creating a video and planning the video, researching for a video. But when it comes to the actual execution, I only get to really film or make time to film or really plan the content over the weekend. But by the time it reaches a weekend, I'm exhausted from the weekday amount of work. Um, so that's why it's been a little bit difficult for me to just juggle a lot of the other responsibilities at once and yeah there's just a lot of factors that I want to go through and also use this time to really catch up with you guys because I feel like I'm just making a lot of excuses in my head so I just wanted to kind of do my skincare makeup um, with you it's Sunday 3 p.m. I'm just getting ready. I haven't really done anything to my face for the entire day today. I was just kind of lazy watching Netflix and trying to recover physically and recharge my energy a little bit. Cooked a lot of Korean side dishes. We call that panchan, little condiments. Uh, so that I'm set for the week. Now I'm gonna get ready because I do have a dinner plan so I'm gonna be going out. I wanna look decent and I kind of feel gross right now so I'm gonna do my skincare routine with y'all and maybe walk you guys through some of the products that I have been enjoying. I haven't even pulled out all the products. I'm gonna just pin here, get my hair out of the way. First things first, I'm gonna be using this pH Balance Calming Toner from Puram. And this is supposed to be a milky toning lotion. Um, I just opened this, so I don't think I have formed an opinion about this product, but I'm just gonna use that to just wipe my face and get rid of any kind of excess sebum. Um, wedding planning is going and we actually set a date so it's gonna happen in January in 2023. I feel like I really don't have a lot of time to actually prepare for that. We just hired a wedding planner, secured a venue. What else? Oh, we secured a video and photo team. So I don't know what else to actually prepare for so we'll get to that maybe in a little bit but um, that has been moving a lot slower than I thought and just because our days are just so busy um, I feel like Neil and I are both really occupied with just work and running the company every single day from Monday to Friday and then like on the weekend both of us are just purely exhausted um, yeah so that's one part of my life that's been happening Next up, serum. This is my day serum, Good Old Green Tender by the Sea Dark, Dark Spot Serum Plus. And you guys have seen this on my channel, on my content numerous times. I still use this. And just do one or one and a half pump all across my face. I don't know, it just plumps up my skin really well and it does even out my complexion like no other vitamin C products. So I still adore it and I would still highly recommend it. Back to the content creation side. I am pretty sure that a lot of skincare content creators or just content creators are in general are feeling in a very similar way where we are constantly you know dealing with new features on each platform and there are new channels like tiktok and you just have this constant pressure to perform and optimize your content and really grow each channel um, and it is a lot it's a lot of pressure and in order for you to really beat the algorithm your content really needs to be so good nowadays especially in the space where we're in right now which is skincare it has blossomed and bloomed and blown up like crazy the past few years which has been a really really positive phenomenon to be honest to observe and it's been such a privilege and a blessing to be a part of this entire skincare community from the very early days in uh, from 2017 where there weren't a lot of skincare folks here on the youtube platform 
um, especially at the time when I was starting. I think there were Gothamista, um, there were also James Walsh, Hiram soon started to talk more about skincare and it's been incredible, incredible to see the entire like small skincare community just becoming and expanding to mainstream pretty much because back in the days the mainstream category was definitely more makeup and nowadays i do think that a lot of skincare you know content creators are deserving the recognition and the 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 love from the public and a lot of you guys are equally interested in really investing more into skincare more than makeup or you know understand the importance of having a good base this is all to say that there is constant pressure for a lot of content creators including myself in how to differentiate your content you know against all the other skincare content creators out there i think that's been particularly hard and it's been amazing to also witness and welcome a lot of professionals in this space like dermatologists skincare scientists chemists and anyone who's in the industry that can provide more um, industry insights like these have been really really amazing especially for consumers or con content consumers um, to be able to have direct access to professional insights or professional advice indirectly i think not a lot of people actually have the ability to visit a dermatologist's office but here on tiktok here on youtube you're able to actually watch a video from a dermatologist who are trained to give advice and who are trained to know so much more but that said i think someone who's just coming from the beauty industry is someone who's just who just loves skincare products to be honest and really appreciates the science and formulation of skincare i think my duty as a skincare content creator it's almost been at a point where i feel like i have provided um, enough value to my audience within the skincare content that i can do which was very focused on skincare diet challenge acne skincare routine and really reframing how we treat or how we approach acne skin because i still preach that oily skin acne prone skin you guys can use facial oil so i think now i've been trying to figure out what's next for my content and how can i refresh my audience because you know like the growth of the channel has been stagnant and that's totally okay i did make a choice when i was starting the company and when i was pretty serious about it i didn't hire a ceo or i didn't hire a general manager or another executive like i'm the only executive for crave beauty unlike a lot of other influencer founded brands or celebrity founded brands Creative Beauty needs a CEO and I, I have made a conscious and intentional choice that I still want to be involved in terms of really shaping the future roadmap of Creative Beauty because that's the whole reason why I wanted to start Creative Beauty in the first place so I didn't want to give my vision away but naturally as I'm more involved in company operations and running it and people managing it and team managing it naturally you know like i have to make compromise with my own time my energy and how much effort i can put into content creation so if i were to spend maybe like 80 percent of my week into content creation back in my maybe like 2017 2018 now it's kind of shrunk to less than five percent um by the time it reaches the weekend i'm like literally dying from the, the the weekday stress and like the just recovering from the intensity of monday to friday and oftentimes i'm still working on saturdays and sundays and barely you know like catching up breath which is fine i still love what i do but i also love creating content but i'm falling behind and what frustrates me more or the most is that 
I have like a million different ideas that I wanna I wanna try with YouTube. I think there are a lot of opportunities where I can come in to provide more contextual insight into how the beauty industry is operating on the back end that you don't necessarily get to see but i get to see on a daily basis because i'm on the other side of the industry and i think there's a lot of great insights that i can pull together to create really really fun um, beauty business video but the next step would be actually hiring someone to bounce ideas and execute on all of these ideas that i have Maybe that's the uh, that's the way to go. And let's apply a moisturizer actually. I have a really beautiful moisturizer that I've been testing. And this is from Korea actually. I don't know if they do sell it here in the States side. It's called Shicho Herb Infused Calming Cream. This is a beautiful uh, moisturizing gel cream. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but it has just little leaf specks inside the cream and I thought like that is so weird because it wouldn't melt on your skin and this is not supposed to be a wash off mask but all these little tiny specks of leaves of the Sika ingredient, the tiger grass they, it melts into the skin right away so I'm assuming that this might be actually like a solidified powder that melts into your skin as with the contact of your skin I don't know, a formulation that I really, really appreciate and something that I have been thoroughly enjoying, really. It has a very strong sage scent to it, which is the only drawback to me because sometimes it does like irritate or like kind of sting my eyes, but it doesn't sting my skin at all. And it's super refreshing, moisturizing, but it's super lightweight doesn't dry your skin at all so this has been my go-to moisturizer for the past month maybe I'll find a link and see if we can find this in the state side but I really enjoyed this actually there are a lot of sunscreen launches there's this that I ordered K-Skin Mineral Sunscreen it is SPF 55 and this is a brand that was founded by the model Winnie Harlow and I'm like so intrigued to try this because it's SPF 55 and at least from um, the video that I saw and the way that Winnie was applying it there was no white cast so I ordered it and there's also a new sunscreen from Super Goop. this is a chemical sunscreen and this is a mineral sunscreen so we can try maybe one on each side but I've been recently testing a lot of new sunscreen launches so if you hop over to my Instagram you can see um, some of the reviews that I've done for the Tatcha Silk Sunscreen which is amazing and the Glow Recipe new sunscreen as well Ooh, it has a GBR color actually I was so, I'm so surprised it looks like grape berry leaf almost but more yellowy and see how it blends oh my god I'm so excited oh oh no cast instantly absorbing into the skin it's pretty mattifying no uh, I, it, what is the smell there is like a slight smell to it which i can't really pinpoint but i don't think they use any fragrance it has hydrating nectar sea moss scalade and their antioxidant complex which you know shows in that natural yellow color or a tint another layer going in So far, I am blown away. Wow. I really like the natural matte finish. I think this will be a really great sunscreen for oily, acne prone skin. Someone who really wants to apply mineral sunscreen. Um, this definitely has zero white cast on me. And I've seen Winnie Harlow's video and it doesn't show any white cast on her too. I'm intrigued to read more reviews on this. This is pretty crazy i love it on the left side i'm gonna try this it's every single face watery lotion spf 50 pa4 pluses from 
Super Goop. This one uses a blend of chemical filters, including avobenzone, homosalate or homosalate, octisalate, octocrylin, and it's supposed to be it's a uh, supposed to be in this watery lotion texture. Let's see how watery it could be. It's not like super runny or fluidy. I think it is like a pleasant this sun gel type of situation. This has definitely a dewier finish than I would like, but it goes on so effortlessly. So I think if you're a fan of that unseen sunscreen from Supergoop, I think this has a pretty similar um, application experience but it does feel like more of a gel lotion so if you want to compare this side is a lot more glossy than the mineral sunscreen side it's a lot sheeny glossy definitely great for dry skin um not for me i'm gonna apply the k-skin mineral sunscreen again on my forehead I don't want so much shine Okay, that will do I definitely think I need to blot my left side Awesome Okay, so now I'm going to start doing my makeup I'm not going to be going through all the products that I use But just wanted to casually chat with you guys, you know Just while getting ready, it's been a long time And... Yeah, I guess another thing that we can talk about is this pressure of wanting to monetize your hobby and this is interesting and I do have probably a different perspective than most people on the social media where it's okay not to monetize your hobby of course it's amazing but just because you love something you enjoy something you don't necessarily need to go all out to monetize um, every single thing out there i noticed that i am a terrible multitasker so <laughs> Let me just blend everything in first I think especially with the great resignation that we're seeing in the entire nation in the United States I think there is this constant notion of whatever you do you need to monetize it if you're if you love content creation you need to monetize it if you love gaming you need to find a way to monetize it and I think I might have a very unpopular opinion and some might say that it's coming from a very privileged space but i think there's been a lot of things that i've seen enough in this space as first a full-time content creator and then second just now like viewing youtube as literally a hobby of mine it's interesting because hobby is something that you truly enjoy and that can free us but monetizing your hobby can really trap you into this hamster wheel or a rat race of chasing money and therefore not really creating value for yourself if, and if that's content creation for your audience as well you immediately know when things started shifting if you do something because you enjoy it, like it becomes an art you're in that amazing mental space we're in that flow and therefore the outcome of what you produce really does benefit the entire world really um, but then if you start creating things because you have to make money which oftentimes could be a trap for a lot of content creators who quit their job to pursue content creation full-time um, you have to make money for sure like i'm not critiquing that aspect i don't think it's fair but I think you tend to lose the integrity I just really don't want to see a lot of people giving up on what brings them joy uh, for the sake of pursuing money, pursuing profit and that's what I've seen enough in this space, in the influencer space and it's, it's not actually an unpopular opinion because i do talk to other peer content creators and they feel the similar way where they're exhausted 
and they are constantly pressured to create content to please the audience instead of really bringing joy to themselves and then that just doesn't become art anymore but more of you're productizing your content which is also fine this entire youtube as a platform back in maybe like 2008 2009 which i'm sure a lot of my audience you are probably young to even watch youtube back then it was such a pure genuine place where michelle font was just literally sharing what she can to on her face and people came to watch what she does and learn how to apply eyeshadow how to draw a correct wing eyeliner and i think that is kind of taken out of the space all the contents that we see nowadays on each social media is somewhat optimized for efficiency because there is profit that's tied to um, every piece of content and funny enough a lot of the content work that really does go viral or that people do appreciate is when it's not really tied to any monetary value or optimization sometimes i just do think that we're putting a lot of pressure on the entire society on the new generation that they should be monetizing everything that they love which could be a blessing and a disguise at the same time I don't know if you agree with that or not but I also want to open up this dialogue to have a conversation and learn more from your perspectives and just have a conversation and that leads to the next topic that I wanted to talk about obviously I'm very chatty today or I had a lot to catch up with you guys my brows are not on fleek but it shall do um, the next piece I wanted to talk about was related to diversity I mean we have been talking a lot about diversity in the past few years and I think that's been a really positive thing just being respect respectful and being inclusive of diverse um, upbringings racial background, ethnic background and income status and whatnot but i think what really gets talked about is actually respecting diverse opinions and diverse perspectives i do think with the proliferation of the use of social media we've been almost trained to have a very polarized view of the entire world not only politics um, you either have to be left or right you either have to be black or white there are no nuances no context no neutral zone um, and i also do think that when i do voice any kind of opinion people can have differing views and i think that's the beauty of having conversations and debate and discussions dialogues i don't think social media is really a place that's inclusive of having diverse opinions anymore whenever i say something i i feel like someone else on the other side says that i'm on the wrong side and i'm saying something that's super insensitive but i wanted to open up this conversation by giving you my perspective giving you the interpretation that i had of this xyz news headline i'm not trying to fight you or i'm not trying to really convince you that this is that you should believe in the way i should believe i think it's so it's become just so um dangerous where we're eventually going to be thinking in only two ways and that's like on the each end of this spectrum and forming this very extreme view of the world when i want to comment on something um, immediately in my head i know that someone's going to call me out if i say this so i naturally kind of like blend it down or not say anything or i'm not encouraged to have a conversation anymore and of course that's like just a minor minor percentage of the people who comes back at me saying that i'm wrong or i'm insensitive but i also think that if that's repeated enough you as a social media influencer you as a content creator you as someone who have a who has a platform with such following i'm naturally discouraged to yeah just not say anything 
And this really isn't a sentiment that's unique to me. I know that a lot of content creators are feeling in a similar way where they can't really voice their opinion anymore because they're afraid of backlashes. Um, but I think that's where the world is. And I think because influencers are very scared of being canceled nowadays, we are literally like tippy toeing around like what other people are doing what is like the general sentiment how can i follow that sentiment or how can i how can we be like politically correct so every comment that we we tend to say on our social media is somewhat i i think is filtered and censored in a lot of ways you know i always have been very honest with my product reviews I rarely critique a brand anymore because I'm afraid that uh, people would view that I'm, you know, just being insensitive and I'm trying to, you know, save Crave Beauty's ads and, you know, clear out the competition in the market. Like, I have never really thought of it that way, but if that's what people think that I'm doing by critiquing or providing constructive criticism of one product from another brand, then I'm gonna be, you know, diluting what I have to say. I'm gonna water it down. I'm gonna only speak and highlight the positive attributes of the product, even though I do have some, you know, some alarming things or some negative things that I have to say about a product. That's what I noticed that's been going on in my mind when I'm trying to post a review about something. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be saying this. But yeah, I think that's. That's pretty sad. All right, everyone, I am done, ready to go. But before I do, I just really want to thank you for hearing me out. This was probably the most random rant that you've come across on this channel. I'm sure you didn't expect this when you clicked on this video. But if you are still watching this video, thank you so much. Seriously, it means a lot. All I want to do is having a more, yeah, having more conversations with you. I think it's been a while ever since I filmed something this unfiltered, this unscripted, so it just feels so good to be as raw and candid as possible and I would love to open up a dialogue and conversation and learn more about your perspective if you have anything to say about any of the topics that I touched on today. Um, but yeah, until we see each other next, stay healthy and take care. Bye!